Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. It's May Day 2016. I'm David Knight. Alex Jones is going to be joining us in the next segment. At the bottom of the hour, we're going to have our reporters Rob Dew and Josh Owens, who just gotten back from California. They were there during the Dreamer riots. I think that's what we need to start calling them. You know, these people, <laughs> they have a dream. They want to destroy this country, and they want to establish uh, Aslan is what they've got. They're waving the Mexican flags. Look, May Day is a day of celebration for the communists worldwide, has been for the Marxists, and now for the illegal immigrants who have thrown in their lot with them. For the rest of us, it's a distress signal, isn't it? You know, it was like SOS didn't come across too well on the radios. They selected SOS because of the uh, pattern that they could get with the, uh, the dot dashes. But when they started talking on radio, the S's were not very intelligible in those early days. So they came up with something else. They kind of uh, did a rough translation of a French phrase. Uh, that said, come help us. That's how we got May Day. But now we've got May Day where they're celebrating this. Alex has broken that down. You can see that report on Infowars.com. Also has some occultic connections to it as well. We're going to be talking about encryption. We're going to be talking about addiction. We're going to be talking about Cruz's continuing quest to take the election from the voters. And it just keeps going. We've got some new news here from Governor Jan Brewer, who says, I got cheated. Okay, this is a former governor of Arizona who goes to the Arizona convention after Donald Trump had won with 47% of the popular vote, had gotten all 58 delegates in Arizona. She goes to the convention where they're going to actually name who these delegates are, and she says, I've been elected to five straight national conventions, but today I got cheated. Okay, she didn't get sent. Because why? Because she supported Donald Trump. And so that brings up what I've said before. You know, when we talk about Trump winning the delegates in Arizona, what does that mean? Doesn't it mean when we say that these people are now Cruz delegates, that they are loyal to Ted Cruz at the convention? Yes, that's what it means. But it means that even though the voters said they wanted people to go to the convention that were loyal to Donald Trump, that's not what's going to happen. See, that's where the problem is, folks. And you can play all the kind of lawyerly parsing around that uh, Ted Cruz likes to do and his supporters like to do. But the bottom line is it's theft. OK, it's not a complicated situation. These should be delegates who are loyal to Donald Trump. If there is an impasse, there needs to be negotiations after several rounds of voting. Then you still want to have people who were loyal to the voters original choice. That's the way that it should be done. We're seeing that subverted over and over and over again. Now, when we look at what's happening coming up to Indiana, again, Ted Cruz seems to be very confident that he's going to win Indiana, but not his candidates, uh, not his campaign. Many of them are concerned that this is going to be the end of the line. But when we joined, uh, when we're joined with uh, Rob Dew and with Josh Owens at the bottom of the hour, we're going to talk to them about what really happened at the riots because now we've had Ted Cruz come back again and make another oblique accusation that Donald Trump is responsible for these riots that uh, Rob Dew and Josh Owens saw. Remember when he did that in Chicago? Remember when he came out and implied that it was Donald Trump? You know, we weren't there in Chicago, but we were there filming this as it happened. Rob Dew and Josh Owens were there filming it. And so it didn't take a couple of days for us to get the information from the police who were there to tell us what really happened. We saw it as it happened. That's what happened in Chicago, though. In Chicago, immediately, Ted Cruz holds a press conference and says, you know, Donald Trump is responsible for this. It's the tenor and the tone of his campaign that is responsible for all this. MoveOn.org, funded by George Soros at the time. This is just back in March, March the 12th, okay? It's not even two months ago that he was doing all this, coming out and saying that it was Donald Trump that was responsible for this. And he had law enforcement people come out and say, no, blocking ambulances, assaulting police officers is not protected First Amendment speech at the time, Okay. He lost a lot of support with law enforcement, and yet he's continuing to do it again. So they're going to break down for us exactly what happened there as these people flew Mexican flags, smashed police cars, attacked and bloodied individuals there on the site. No, that's just their free speech, and Ted Cruz supports that. Yeah, you know, it's the identity politics. Stay with My friends, it's May Day. 
o'clock on this Sunday edition of the Worldwide Broadcast. And David Knight, Rob Dude, Josh Owens, and others will be presenting to you definitive proof and evidence of the accelerated globalist takeover of this country. Red flags are waving at anti-American demonstrations across the United States. The foundation-funded radicals of liberation theology are preparing to descend this nation into fire, to intimidate what's left of the republic into submitting to globalist domination. We're going to present some videos today that, quite frankly, uh, we've had to edit and censor because of the cussing, the screaming, and just other bizarre behavior that Rob Dew, Josh Owens, and others got out in California. The videos have been all over Fox News, CNN. Of course, they didn't give us any credit. That doesn't matter. The point is the information got out. People trying to run folks over with cars, people waving Mexican flags, screaming, Viva La Raza, up with the race. This is the total destruction of this republic that we are all now witnessing. And it's only the beginning of the balkanization that is planned in this country. But when you look at the dumbed down people, the social justice warriors, the Black Lives Matter people, the Mecha La Raza Ford Foundation, CIA created uh, La Raza movements, these are true mind control victims. And I actually pity them when you see the soullessness uh, of these poor pathetic people who are saying they want to turn the United States into Mexico. Well, you know what? At least Mexico has, I guess, some type of nationalism and culture. Ours has been completely removed. The idea of liberty and freedom and free market and family that could unify all races groups together under the collective of the republic, but a collective based on the individual, the only true collective that is real, lasting, and that transcends time and space and human existence on this planet. But I wanted to just have Rob Dew come in today with David Knight and with Josh Owens to really talk about what they experienced, what they saw. There's a very powerful short interview that Rob Dew did uh, with a, a man. I don't want to call him a black man or a white man, but he was a mixed race, black, white human who eloquently laid out exactly what we're facing and what he witnessed from the social justice warriors out at these anti-Trump events. And he said after he saw folks beating people up for their free speech, he had to come out uh, and had to witness it for himself. And then he had whites, blacks, and Hispanics all saying he was a racist because he was out there in support of free speech. Even though he doesn't agree with a lot of what Donald Trump says, he's very clear he's there to defend free speech. And there they were with all this dumbed-down vitriol screaming at him like it was a trick that, it, that the dog had learned. This is all these young people know. They're not being taught how to get jobs, how to be charming, how to dress nice, how to have a future. They're not going to Toastmasters. No, they just sit there rotting, watching popular television, popular culture run by the globalist and Beyonce at the Super Bowl, telling them how to behave and what to do, and now is the time to activate. Well, if you study May Day, it's a high occultic day in Northern and Western Europe. It's a day of human sacrifice. And if you look at the symbol that you'll see all over the country and the world today of the peace sign, it is the death rune, the Norse death rune, also the death rune in German runes, uh, and the same rune uh, in other Gaelic groups. One of the oldest runes out there uh, is, uh, again, a tree is like a cross with its arms up for life, but when the tree's branches have fallen down to its sides, that's the symbol of death. Everything these people push is the opposite of what they're really doing. Now, this is how the globalists control things, because the anti-war people are great folks on average. They have real ideas. There has been a lot of racism and classism and sexism. So the foundation sees on that to control it, but then to create chips on everyone's shoulders. So as we move into the future, people aren't upset about collectively being signed on to trillions of foreign debt and derivatives. People don't get upset about collectively having medical tyranny foisted on them and forced vaccines. People don't get upset about suicide um, record levels in the troops and death panels to not give them treatment till they just go and blow their heads off. And that's people of every race, color, and creed that's happening to. So as we all lose our humanity, as thousands of laboratories across the world 
Hundreds in the U.S. now have chimera, part animal, part human creatures living on them, gestating uh, humanoids for body part harvesting. And this is in the MIT magazine. It's everywhere. No one cares about that dehumanization. Oh, the little bunny groups say, don't worry, animals weren't tested on. And the human groups, well, that can't be going on, even though it's admitted that's too sci-fi. You see, these humanoid creatures don't have any rights because they're neither cow or human. And again, I keep going back to this because this is the Buck Rogers nightmare stuff going on while we're debating idiocy about how the folks should shut down Donald Trump and his speeches because the media said he was racist. I mean, give me a break. Mexico teaches that the Southwest belongs to Mexico. Mexico teaches that the U.S. will be brought down. Mexico teaches uh, you know, that the gringos are evil and you know, need to be killed and all this garbage. It's well known. So you have this super aggressive false culture with the Mexican government and the CIA and the Ford Foundation on record weaponizing the last 60 years to try to merge our countries together and then control us by turning us against each other. It is pathetic. It is absolutely disgusting and it is anathema to everything that we see in a free society to sit here and put up with this garbage. But I'm telling you, on this May Day, you notice they are launching their operations everywhere and they are gearing up. And uh, we're going into this election season, one of the most important, not just in my lifetime or your lifetime, but in the last really 240 years. This is one of those pivotal times where the future of the republic is being decided. And, the, and Trump simply stands as a nationalist and a populist. And in his office, he stands for the people, whether he's real or not. So this is a battle of, of, of nationalism against the globalists. And notice the globalists tell us we can't have any nationalism, but then they'll use the communist Chinese nationalism against us saying we can't have Trump. Or Mexico's nationalism saying we can't have Trump. Or the Pope coming out saying, you know, we can't have borders. This is the world ganging up on America and telling us what to do. Because somebody like Donald Trump says, hey, China has a 35 to 40 percent tariff on us, on their currency. That's not fair. Oh my God, he's racist. Oh my God, he's evil. No, the criminal elements that have hijacked this nation think that they have broken this country's back. These criminal interests think they're invincible. They think they're unstoppable. And they think that you're going to just sit there and submit to them. So we're going to come back in the next segment with David Knight, Rob Dew, Josh Owens in studio. And they're first going to play an uh, excerpt of the interview uh, with the quote, black Trump supporter, that's the name of the video, uh, speaks out against the hateful anti-Trump people. And then we're going to play some of the other excerpts. We can't play much of this, these videos because of the cussing. you got to go to Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, and you can find the raw videos, the boil downs. It's pretty powerful stuff. We've got some on the Facebooks that uh, mentions that have gotten 3 million views just in one video. Uh, tens of millions of views total. Folks, you need to see these videos and just see what the globalists have been breeding in our bosom with a gangbanger culture that MTV's been pushing since the 80s, mixing it with weird nationalism against the United States and bringing in giant Latin American groups uh, that will then be used as the detonator for further societal collapse. And let me explain something. I'm not against the Latin Americans. They've been run over by the globalists worse than anybody. And most people in Mexico, by the way, just want jobs and freedom and, 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 and the right to have a better future. I know that. But the people that the Ford Foundation and the high schools and the colleges have been fomenting are really just some of the trashiest scum I've ever seen. I mean, you go out and see a Ku Klux Klan rally, it's a bunch of scum who are dumbed down, want to blame people for their problems. Well, let me tell you something, they found their kindred spirits in the Black Lives Matter groups and in all these other organizations. They have found their kindred spirits because... You look at the people in these videos. I don't care if they're white social justice warriors, white knights, Hispanic, Mexican nationalist, racist scum, or, 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 or the Black Lives Matter crazies. They are absolutely foaming at the mouth, screaming and yelling and attacking people in their cars and beating people up and attacking folks for absolutely no reason and then not even getting in trouble for it. This is how the globals plan to bring down our country. That's why Infowars.com is more important than ever. People realize that Infowars.com is the tip of the spear and we need your support and we need you to spread the word and the links to our videos and articles, which I know you're already doing. But we've got to redouble our efforts right now because we're in such a critical time. Infowars.com forward slash show. Send that link out. Support the broadcast. We've got a bunch of specials at Infowarsstore.com that are ending today. So take advantage of that as well and help us fund true 21st century media to defend the republic from all enemies, foreign and domestic.
Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here live in Austin. We're going to be joined in the next segment by Rob Dew and Josh Owens, our reporters who were in California at the Dreamer Riots. They're going to give us their firsthand uh, impressions of what they saw there, as well as show us the video that they shot. We've got some new video that has not been aired. And uh, we're also going to be taking your calls if you want to ask them what they saw, ask some questions of them after we talk about it here a while, or if you've got some comments, perhaps you were there. I want to talk about encryption before we get into the election here. But before we do, just want to remind you that we have extended the sale for InfoWars Select Storable Food to tonight. We extended it through the weekend as a thank you in order to help our listeners to prepare for possible unrest or food shortages that might come through. This is a mega sale. This is the most we've ever discounted Select Storable Food, 30 to 40 percent off. 30 to 40% off. That ends tonight, so act right now. Uh, this, of course, is food that has a shelf life of 25 years, all made in the USA. High-quality stuff, high-quality packaging, and you can get it right now, 30 to 40% off. Also, Super Male Vitality is about to sell out, so if you're not signed up for auto ship, which you really should, you can save 10%. You can also make sure that you always get the products that you want and the quantities you want when you want. You can set the interval and the quantity that you want to get and then get a 10% discount for doing that. But if you're not on auto ship, we're about to sell out of Super Male Vitality as well. So secure your supply of that. And the mega sale on InfoWar Select Storable Food, 30 to 40% off, ends tonight. We extended it through the weekend, but it will definitely end tonight. Now, as I said, before we get to the election, we're going to be talking about the Dreamer Riots, possibly what's happening with May Day as well, uh, some election news with Rob and Josh in the next segment. I want to talk a little bit about encryption. You know, Ed Snowden was on CNN today, and he had some interesting statements. He said... Encryption saves lives. Encryption protects property. Without encryption, our economy stops, our government stops, everything stops. Just think about the fact, folks, that our government, that we're supposed to entrust all of our information to, was just hacked and lost all of their personnel records. All government personnel records were hacked. Okay, Yet, we're supposed to give everything to them. And as he goes on to point out, Ed Snowden says today on, uh, on uh, CNN... Our intelligence agencies say computer security is a bigger problem than terrorism, a bigger problem than crime, a bigger problem than anything else. And he says, we can pass a law that requires a key under every doormat in order to make things easier for police to get into your house. But the problem is that every other person in the world can find that key and they can use it, too. And they can also get into your personal effects, all of your information. You know, I was looking at a story that came out this weekend about the internal dispute, and you can see the stories up on the Drudge Report, between the leader of Scientology and his father. There's this back and forth going on between them as to uh, what they've been doing, the cult of Scientology. And I thought about the cult of the omnipotent state and how we're willing to sacrifice our freedoms to that. Because listen to what he said. He's talking about, this is the father saying, this is what it was like, the horrible situation of being in this Scientology cult. He said, I was living on a compound where your mail going out is read before it's sealed and sent out, where before you get your mail, it's opened and read before you get it. The phone calls, he says, you're on the phone, somebody else is listening in. And then you've got Gary Moorhead, a former Scientologist who's now a critic, says he was once a director of security. He said, I would go through people's personal belongings out of their birthing, where they slept. I would get their bank records, their date of birth, their passwords, any personal information where their family addresses were, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, yeah, you know, they're painting a, a pretty creepy image, aren't they? Well, what about the Church of Scientology? But what if you live in America? Doesn't, doesn't our government do the same thing? What is so great about the cult of the omnipotent state? I mean, I don't want to be part of any cult. I don't want the Scientologists going through all my personal effects, and I don't want the government doing it either. And yet, you may not have realized this, but we had a Supreme Court decision on Thursday, a ruling from the Supreme Court where they approved changes that would make it easier for the FBI to hack into your computers, including those belonging to victims, Victims of cybercrime. See, not just the perpetrators, but the victims they could, uh, uh, could hack into their computers. These changes will take place in December unless Congress adopts competing legislation. This is a story from The Intercept. They say, previously, under federal rules on criminal procedure, a magistrate judge could not approve a search warrant 
uh, request for a computer remotely if the investigator didn't know where the computer was because it might be outside his or her jurisdiction. Well, you know, it might also be outside of the Fourth Amendment because the Fourth Amendment says you've got to be very specific about what you're looking for and who you're looking uh, at and where you're going to look for this information when you get that search warrant. It says that you're going to go before a judge and the law enforcement officer is going to particularly describe the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized, etc. Okay? That's the problem with these dragnet surveillance warrants that are being done by the FISA court. And I put that term court in quotes. It's not really uh, that. But isn't this amazing? We've got the Supreme Court writing laws just like the regulatory agencies do, don't they? They come up with a new ruling. They're writing their laws. They're not elected by us. But you've got all these regulatory agencies writing law, writing rules. And say, well, you know, if somebody doesn't have a, doesn't shut this down in a certain amount of time, uh, we're going to go through with this. So the default is we're going to write the laws unless you come back. And, you know, quite frankly, if Congress were to come back and remind the Supreme Court that we have a Fourth Amendment, I would imagine that the Supreme Court would say, no, nah, we don't care. We don't care. Uh, the, we'll hear the arguments from the law enforcement people, and we'll decide in their favor and against Congress. That's probably what they would do. Because they're there, they say, to tell us what the Constitution says. And they're there to shut down unconstitutional laws. And yet here they are, the Supreme Court writing a law in violation of the Constitution. A visiting professor at the University of California Law School described it as, quote, possibly the broadest expansion of extraterritorial surveillance power since the FBI's inception. Now, today we've got a story up on the Drudge Report. It says, uh, can you say rubber stamp? This is from uh, Yahoo. The FBI and the NSA requests are never denied by the secret court, by FISA. Remember why we have a FISA court. Remember that they created the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act and the court that is part of that. They created that because of the Church and Pike hearings, the church senate hearings, the Pike House hearings back in the 1970s, they said, wait a minute, we've got the NSA and the FBI and the CIA listening in on Americans' conversations. That's against the Constitution. You can't do that. That was back in the 70s. So I said, all right, all right, we, we still need to be able to do this. We've got to have, uh, we'll come up with a search warrant procedure, but it's got to be done secretly. So they create this secret court. Now, there's no lawyer for the other side. It's only one lawyer and one judge in this FISA court, quote unquote. It is a star chamber, folks. And the worst thing about it is not the Mr. and Mrs. Verizon search warrants, as Rand Paul has called them. The fact that they get a, broad, a dragnet, uh, broadly based surveillance warrant, quote unquote. Now, the worst thing is, is that the FISA court is saying that they are modifying our Constitution, just like the Supreme Court. And yet, unlike the Supreme Court, we can't even see when they are writing new laws. That's how bad this is getting. It's absolutely over the top, absolutely uncontrolled. And you want to talk about a crazy religious cult? It's the omnipotent state we need to be worried about because that's the one that is coming after everybody. Stay with us. Be right back with Rob Dew, Josh Owens, and the Dreamer Riot. So they saw firsthand looking at some new video footage. To the Alex Jones Show on this May Day 2016. I'm David Knight, and joining me now are Rob Dew and Josh Owens, our reporters who've just returned from California and the Dreamer Riots. That's what I think that'll be called. I've never quite seen anything like this. Uh, I, I guess, you know, Ted Cruz says that Donald Trump encourages these riots. He's done this a second time now. He did it in Chicago, except this time you guys were there as it was happening. So we can see that it wasn't uh, uh, the Trump people. We can see who started this. We can see uh, what they did. Uh, but it's just absolutely amazing to me that he keeps doubling down on this. Yeah, he has obviously has nowhere else to go. We were yeah. in the midst of the precious snowflake snowstorm <laughs> in uh, Southern California and in um, San Francisco. Let me tell you how whirlwind this was. We left the office here at uh, what two thirty. We flew out. Yep. And or uh, one thirty, we flew out. We got to California at two thirty. We were on site an hour later. Um, and it was very reserved in the beginning. In fact, we, when we did our interview on the InfoWars Nightly News, we couldn't hardly find any protesters. We found one guy talking in a crowd to some other people. And then uh, after we got off about 20 minutes before he was the, the rally was scheduled to start, a whole group march up. And then 
that's when the, the cops on the horses come in and start getting in between people. And you can see all this on the Alex Jones channel. We have tons of videos show, illustrating how this went down. Yeah. And we actually, we started off with the night stuff first because that was the most sensational stuff that happened a couple hours after the stuff I'm talking about now. But they come in, um, they're keeping the groups apart, they're yelling at each other. And then when it was people that couldn't get in were trying to leave, there was at least, I'd say, three to 4,000 people that could not get into this rally, 30,000 on the inside. <laughs> Large number of people. We couldn't even see the end of the lines. And that's how it, every Trump rally I've been to, it's been like that. Thousands of people there. About how many protesters or dress me were there? I would say in the beginning, there was probably 200 to 250, maybe. Probably. Do Donald Trump actually posted a photo. It's an aerial shot of it. And you can see, I think there were, he said, I think they sold, or they, you know, there were 30,000 tickets that people got. And what, I mean, thousands were turned away. Yeah. And the whole stadium, which I think held 8,500, but they packed it in, uh, was completely full. No. Uh, and you see the whole stadium here, and then, I mean, it pales in comparison mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to the protesters. A very small number. Maybe. Obviously, the loud minds. Because I know when we were in New York, right. there were articles that came out that said, look, thousands of people protesting Donald Trump when he's speaking to, uh, uh, to the uh, Jewish lobby there. But what they had was a small cordoned off area that was maybe right. uh, 50 to 100 protesters. Well, and you could see it after everybody went in, but they had this massive sea, and they just took a picture of everybody that was lined up to go oh, right. into and so those the, are protesters. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what, what, the, what they did wrong was they gave the protesters the entire parking lot, essentially. Mm -hmm. So the protesters had the whole parking lot in which they can go to. And this is, a, this is footage from San Francisco that we shot. But, and we'll get to that in a second. We have a good video uh, of a guy who really gets it all. He, he gets it while he was there. We're going to play that one in a second. But they gave him the whole parking lot. So when people were leaving that couldn't get in, they started jawing. You know, they were getting jawed at. They were getting called racist. They, in addition to being yelled at for an hour and a half mm -hmm. by these people. Mm -hmm. OK, and then they try to leave there uh, and the protesters start blocking the roads. They start doing these donuts, and wheel, uh, spinning out their tires and just, you know, making a lot of smoke. And I saw the smoke from I was interviewing people and, and the, it's starting to get dark and I could see smoke. Coming I thought it was a car fire. There was so much smoke. I think that's what drew everyone over, that's what drew to, everyone over, over to that was a car on fire. Mm -hmm. And and then they, they just started blocking the streets. They blocked off this one corner and then it went to there's mayhem. A, there's after a picture that. anybody's watching. There's, there's a, guy a guy doing donuts. Who's drifting in the Miata there. Yeah. And, and the, you know, look. He may be a good driver, but those aren't pylons. Those are people, right. and it's a crazy crowd, and they're moving. And no matter how good a driver he is, that is really irresponsible. I hate to see that happen because I don't want to see. Uh, well, I guess I really thought somebody was going to get run over <laughs> at any moment. I thought somebody was going to get hit, and luckily yeah. nobody did get hit. I backed up a little bit because I got. I, I was like, "Well, he's going to do one donut and take off." No, he did like eight donuts <laughs> and took off. But let, let's go to this video now of of the. Um, of the Donald Trump, he said, he said, I don't know if I'm going to vote for him, but I'm supporting what he stands for mm -hmm. uh, in free speech. And this is a guy who came out. I talked to him at the end of this, uh, of what was going on at this rally. And it was, it was a weird rally, the way they were, how organized they were. The, the one in, in Southern California, not very organized. People were just kind of mobbing around, doing mm -hmm. whatever. This one, they had attack patterns that they were developing and they, yeah, and people right. were following them. And they seemed to be led by a group in, uh, in, with green bandanas on. They were, they were anarchists that were jawing with me in the beginning. They, they didn't like the fact that I was talking about biosphenol A in the juice boxes or vaccines or fluoride in the water. They wow. thought that was all kooky, you know. Oh, really? But then they didn't want to talk about it. They go, yeah. we're not here to talk. We're here to cause. And throw eggs. Mayhem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. throw eggs. Yeah. 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 Just want to disrupt stuff. Yeah, yeah let's do that guy, the uh, black Trump supporter who calls out. His name's Ronnie. Ronnie. Protesters. Yeah, let's, let's roll that report. Okay, so I'm walking here with a guy. What's your name? Johnny, right? Is that what you said? I'm Ronnie. Ronnie. That's Ronnie. Said. Okay. And uh, so why are you out here today? Um, you know, I am a Trump supporter. I'm def I don't know if I would vote for him, but I have to support what he's standing for yeah. because I've been seeing all this opposition coming from Bernie and Hillary supporters and sitting there talking about we're, liber we're liberal, we're loving, we, we, we just want peace, yet they throw eggs at you and, and punch you in the mouth because they're peaceful and loving. I saw what went down in, uh, in Southern California. Right. I, I, it got to me. I had to come out here and actually talk about what's going on. These people don't want to talk to you. That's the problem. They, they sit there and say they don't have double standards yeah. and that they're not hypocritical. They'll come up to you and just yell and scream like you're just, you're nobody. We hate you. You're racist. You're misogynist, homophobic. I have black friends. I have white friends. I have Mexican friends. And supposedly I'm a racist. Wow, that's crazy. My family is black. We're all mixed. Okay. So it has nothing to do with race. I think Trump is really just trying to get 
the sovereignty back in America when he's talking about the borders. Like, right. he's not saying, let's import all Muslims, let's import all Mexicans. He's talking about the drug pushers. He's talking about the criminals. He's talking about them. He's not talking about good people that are going to work every day and paying their bills. And there's just too many of these misconceptions generated by the hype of the mainstream media. And people just kind of buy into it because of the herd mentality. I, I really urge people to, you know, read Edward Bernays' book on propaganda. When I wrote, when I read that book, blew my mind, blew my freaking mind, man. So, yeah, see, but that's yeah, that's that is a Bernie supporter because they love you. That's love right there. You see that? Look, you I don't got, think he supports anyone. I, yeah, I think he just supports hate, but apparently I support hate. But you read Edward Bernays' book on propaganda, it blows your mind. It's like almost everything that's going on right now. He talked about it a hundred years prior. It's crazy, you know. And he then, nailed it. Yeah, yeah, totally yeah. Did <laughs> they find that guy over there, or what's going no, on? No, he t they managed to escape the mob. Okay. All right. Uh, so what was going on? The guy was uh, he threw eggs at a guy that was burning a flag. The kid, I, the kid that they they stole this kid's American flag and okay. then burned it, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, hit the kid that had the flag with an egg. And so they were chasing the guy that threw the egg and stole the flag. It was the same person. Apparently. Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Yep. Interesting doings here at the uh, Trump protest. I don't know if. I might go check into my hotel right now. Looks like things are. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, well, I'm supposed to fly out at five, so I don't even know if I'm going to check into the hotel. I might just grab the bags and go. But <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, do uh, you have anything else you want to add? Um, I just want to add that. Uh, I mean, if you're if you're a Trump supporter, or if you simply are just supporting Trump because you're tired of what's going on, don't be afraid to come out here. You know, don't be afraid to uh, to defend yourself against Bernie supporters. But I will say, don't get violent with these people because they are so manipulative. They are so crazy. I mean, one guy was literally just like, he was 10 feet away from me. And he's like, why don't you come up here and tell me how much you want to hit me? I said, I never said I wanted to hit you. No, you said it. You said it. Oh, so you're saying that I said it without saying it. He goes, uh, you're just whitewashed. You're just whitewashed, bro. So that's, that's all it is. It's just all a bunch of insults. And I'm in fifth grade, but I think I'm adult level of thinking. You know, he, just know that you're a man <laughs> or know that you're a person. Like and just are moving in over here. Oh, yeah. Right, now we have to investigate. Boy, that guy is really wise. Yeah, he really he really gets it. Yeah, and and yeah, you can see the rest of it. There's a whole backstory, more stuff going on in this video because they find the guys that are fighting. And then I, I interview the guy who's carrying around the Donald Trump head as well. There's a guy carrying around on a giant fishing pole. If you did that or if I did that with an Hispanic or a black man said, oh, we'd or be Hillary, racist or, or Hillary. Hillary would be yeah. misogynist. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. But no, yeah, this guy's allowed to do that. And so I let him I'll let him say his piece and basically, you know, stick his foot in his mouth. All right. So that's a new video. We just played a portion of it. You can see the rest of it at the Alex Jones channel. We're going to be right back with Josh Owens and Rob Dew telling us about the Dreamer riots. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host, and joining us on this May Day 2016 are Rob Dew and Josh Owens, who were just at the Dreamer riots in California. You know, when I look at this uh, May Day and these riots, uh, my Reaction, Rob and, and Josh, is uh, the, the Mayday <laughs> distress call, you know? And when I look at this, it makes me want to keep my powder dry. We're talking about uh, these riots here, and we're talking about uh, Ted Cruz shutting down the elections, putting his own delegates in. You know, we've got the four boxes of li liberty, right, that people talk about. you got the soapbox, your free speech. you got the ballot box elections. Those are both under attack. We see that with these uh, Trump protesters. We also see it with the uh, elections that are being stolen. And of course, we've got Cruz coming out and blaming Trump for encouraging the rioters, putting, saying it's Trump's fault that all this stuff is happening. I, do you really think this would be happening if we didn't have open borders, because most of these people that were there appear to be dreamers coming across, dreamer age, flying Mexican flags, and screaming that uh, they wanted their free education and their their goodies. Well, and, and not to separate things by race, but just from looking at the general crowd, and you can look at the video and, and see this, I'd say 75% were Hispanic. I don't know how many of those were illegal or how many of their parents were illegal, mm -hmm. but I did see a lot of Mexican flags. Definitely, and they were all screaming undocumented and unafraid. So. Yeah, that's yeah. right, that's right. And and the age group as well. So yeah, we'll they were all that. very. They're I would say mostly very young. Um, you know, twenties and under, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of high school kids couldn't even vote. And then there were some some white kids sprinkled in with them, and some some blacks. But I'd say more. It was more white. Or it was more Hispanic, and then white, and then and then black. Nevertheless, you know, when we look at this, we look at 
people violently trying to shut down free speech. Yeah. We look at the rigging of our elections being done openly, and they're, they're talking about it in a way that they've never talked about it before because they've never had to talk about it. We've known that this existed because we've, we've followed this. So there's two of the boxes. And, of course, you've also got the jury box. You've got the ammo box, okay? But you also need the food box, too. <laughs> that's, that's the fifth one. Then. That's the fifth, the fifth one. one. We need to put a fifth one in there for your liberty, and that's the food box. And before we get back to talking about the dreamers here, folks, there is... Is a, a way that you can uh, that you can stock up your fifth box, your uh, your your storage box. Here we've got Infowars Select Storable Food at a thirty to forty percent discount. This is our mega sale. Time to load. Uh, up. It was going to end on Friday night. That's right. It was going to end on Friday night, but Alex extended it through the weekend to help you prepare as a thank you. And again, it's the biggest uh, discount we've ever had. Uh, this is the most you will see off of this Select Storable Food. Thirty to forty percent off. Now is the time to stock up. It has a shelf life of 25 years, all top quality food, no GMO. It's made in the USA. So is the packaging, total USA product. Uh, this is one way to uh, prepare for yourself and to uh, help people who are businessmen in the U.S. as well. Again, it's for a limited time only. It's going to end tonight. This is the absolute end of the sale. 30 to 40 percent off InfoWars Select Storable Food. That's your fifth box your uh, cupboard box okay and, and i got something to say about this we were when we were in san francisco there was a debate to towards the end the the protests had kind of the riot the rioting had kind of died down the people banging on windows and trying to get into this hotel that had kind of died down the cops had maintained control but there was a a debate going on about gun safety and how how many bullets you should be allowed to have in your cartridge and then this girl who's has to be in you know uh, she kind of reminded me of the girl who got maced in um, in J uh, J Janesville. Mm -hmm. One who gets maced for punching the guy. She was very loud mouthy and what are you one of those preppers? You know, <laughs> they live in a freaking earthquake zone. Okay, and yeah, these are the these are the people that should be right? getting prepared for anything to happen. You should have firearms. You should have food. You should have water. Yeah. I mean, these are things you need if, if you have an earthquake, because guess what? It's going to take a while for help to get there. Yeah. And yeah. they might not be in your area. Yeah. Or you might have to travel across some ravine or something that the bridge is gone. What if that happens? You're going to need food for your family. And That's here she it. is, the worst possible scenario. Oh, yeah. What's earthquake she zone, a city, and absolutely contemptuous of any what preparation. What are you, a prepper? <laughs> and, and then I got, I got one more thing to add. That we, we were in uh, San Diego. We had just flown into San Diego to fly back to Austin on Friday night. And... We get off the plane. We're just looking for our gate. And some guy goes, hey, Rob, do. I'm like, what? I just turned, because that doesn't happen to, you know, Alex Jones, I've been with him. It happens to him all the time. Never happened to me. This guy comes up. He, start, he, he starts shaking our hand. He's real happy. He's like, man, I love the work you guys are doing. Great job. Great job. He goes, let me tell you something. I was skeptical about that brain force, but I, I, I got some. Man, that stuff works. <laughs> and then he went off and proceeded to talk for 10 minutes straight. I mean, just like a stream of consciousness, like talking about all the issues out there. He's, what do you think about this? Well, I think, da, da, da. you know, he, he he's tell, remembering everything. He was yeah. on brain force and it was making his synapses just go. And he was, he, he was, okay. had all the points coherent. It wasn't like he was on drugs. It was like he was. He was uh, just a regular human. Just mm -hmm. his spark, the spark had been turned on in his mind. So, you know, as the news director here at Infowars.com, I want to thank everybody for supporting us because it's when you go out and buy the products like this that it enables, you know, Josh and myself and yeah. other reporters to go out on these trips and show people what it's like. You know, we became the mainstream media in Southern California because none of the other media was there. They had retreated. They had got their sound bites. They were happy. Oh, we showed the protesters and how great and peaceful they are. They didn't want to show the protesters kicking in police cars and slashing tires and beating up people. And oh, I went through all the cars. headlines on Friday. I said, look at the way the mainstream press is talking about this. Yeah. Unrest at Trump protests, mm -hmm. violence at Trump uh, rally, okay? And and it's like, it's not unrest, okay? That's what you get. <laughs> These are programmed, doesn't, programmed doesn't for kids. you, okay? They are all yeah. programmed. They have the talking points that have been embedded into their skulls from whatever media source they're getting it from, most likely MSNBC. But CNN. they also made it sound as if it was coming from Trump. Right. As if it was oh, coming yeah. from the Trump supporters. Right. They didn't show where the violence was coming from. And, and that was implied in their headlines that it was the fault of Trump, just as Cruz is saying that he is encouraging riots, okay? Uh, and going to encourage riots in Cleveland. Right. I interviewed a guy right before this happened, 
uh, right before the, the the spinning out stuff and the the rioting started happening in the in the streets. And he goes, "Man, I was just trying to walk to get up here, and people were trying to take my hat. I got punched. I got kicked." He's like, "This is ridiculous. I wasn't even doing anything. I wasn't even talking to anybody. I was just trying to get through the crowd." Yeah, and, and that's how that's how loving and you know, these people are. Yeah, intolerant. You oh, know, destroying destroying their car yeah. just for sitting in a car with a Trump T-shirt oh, on. I know. I saw that video. Terrorizing. They, the they, they got around the car. Looked like they were going to physically attack yeah. them. They're hitting the car and everything. Meanwhile, they're spraying this white car with graffiti, spitting Black all over graffiti, it. spitting on them and yeah. everything. Yeah, but I mean, spraying the spray painting the car. The and car they want to carry destroyed. signs that say "Love Trump's hate, Love Trump's hate." Yeah. Yeah. That what they are doing is not love in yeah. any way, shape, or form. What they are what they are showing is intolerance, mm -hmm. and that's why we have to go out there and expose that. So I want to. I really do want to thank everybody for supporting us because it lets us go out there and expose these people for what they really are. And yeah. we're going to continue to do it. Don't worry, we're going to continue. Yeah, and we we just had that uh, video from that uh, that black guy, the young black guy. He knew exactly what was going on. He said, these protesters out here have been thoroughly propagandized. He was familiar with Edward Bernays. Yep. He knew what that was all about. And he said, these people are victims of this. They don't know what they're talking about. All they can do is spout these slogans and spout these epithets that they put on people. You're racist, you're yeah. homophobic, you're mis misogynist. And they don't want to debate. You start yeah. asking them a couple exactly. questions, they run off. They're not about F you, I'm out of here. They yeah. don't want to talk. That's right. Do we have time to play that one uh, compilation from uh, from Thursday night? Yeah, yeah, let's play that. The uh, anti-Trump rioters gone wild. Let's yeah. play that. That's about it's going viral, years. people. Yeah. It's going viral. Mega viral. Trump's a Nazi. How, how, many Jews, how many Jews has Trump killed? Huh? How many Jews has Trump killed? Oh, please. How many Polish gypsies? Oh, please. in like five minutes. In like five minutes, there's going to be pepper spray and riot here running all through here. I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly under the name of the people of the state of California demand all those assembled on Ferris and Fairview to immediately disperse. Rob, word up, like, dude, he, he said that us Mexicans are bringing all types of bad people to this, to this country? That's incorrect. They're destroying a police car right now, okay? They were jumping on top of it. They're he just said, rocking. Trump says we're bringing all bad people here, but they're right. running around with the Mexican flags on their heads, smashing the windows yeah. of police cars. That's not bad. And now they're, now they're pushing people that they don't like. That was when they are beating up that guy. He's bloodied right now. That's the guy that got bloodied. And then now we got the donuts. Okay, they're... <laughs> all right, that video's got over 2 million views on Facebook. It's gone viral. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and with me are Rob Dew and Joshua Owens, and they were... Of course, at the Dreamer Riots in California, based around the Trump rallies. And, of course, you're not allowed to have a rally. You'll have a lot of, uh, I guess, what were these guys, about uh, uh, high school to college age, most of them, uh, coming out there with Mexican flags, uh, waving them, wearing them on their heads, and uh, smashing police cars, you know, because you can't have a, a, a political rally. It was an interesting thing, and I want to. we're going to come back to the videos and what you guys saw there, but I want to get your reaction to this. Listen to what Heidi Cruz said yesterday. Let's play this clip. Ted is an immigrant. He is Hispanic. <laughs> Ted is an immigrant. He is a Hispanic. <laughs> this is an interesting admission because this is something that's... Yeah, let's play that one more time. Ted is an immigrant. He is Hispanic. Ted is an immigrant. He is Hispanic. Okay. Now, this is something that's picked up on the Washington Examiner. It was interesting because the context of this was how he's going to unify the party. That's the next thing she said. Okay, he's been winning the women's vote in state after state. Well, he didn't win it 
in the last like six New York's at all. Okay, <laughs> he was like way behind in every demographic. Okay, in every state. Uh, but of course, he if he gets if he wins one state, he's got momentum again, according yeah. to his people. But here's the thing: she's trying to make this case, and they will be whoever they need to be in order to get votes. So to these people, she's saying Ted is an immigrant. He is a Hispanic. And I look at this and I think about what uh, what what uh, Donald Trump said. He said, well, you know, Ted Cruz was a Canadian until about 14 or 15 months ago. OK, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I have to ask myself, we will protect the banker class. <laughs> yeah. You know, when when questioned about his natural born citizen status, Ted Cruz always says, well, I'm a lawyer. I've argued before the Supreme Court. I know what a natural born citizen is. And yet he wants to tell us that he had no idea he was a Canadian citizen until just 14 or 15 months ago. I mean, how is this guy even remotely competent or honest if either of those things are true? It's absolutely amazing. There is a difference, and people need to understand this, there is a difference between a naturalized citizen and a natural born citizen. That qualification was in there. If you want to go back and look at the discussions around the time the Constitution was ratified, if you want to be an originalist, which is what Ted Cruz says he's going to support, uh, 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 put into the Supreme Court, if you want to know what the Constitution means, what these phrases mean, just like you want to know what militia means, you can go back and you look at the deliberations at the time the Constitution was passed. It's not rocket science. It's not hidden. It's not some obscure thing. We know what it means. He doesn't want to talk about it. He just wants to say, hey, I'm I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm qualified. Okay, well, but he's not Dave, David, I met two naturalized citizens. I, I, I definitely met more, but I interviewed two. One was from Ecuador, and one was from Australia, and they talked about the process they had to go through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it took. One, pro one of the things I don't like about that process is they had to get her up, to, the, the lady had to get her up to date on her vaccine. She mentioned that. And mm. She was not uh, into vaccines at all, and she didn't agree with that, but she wanted to become a citizen. Um, but they said one took six years, one took seven years. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not a cakewalk, but I said, is, was it worth the effort? I said, yes, it was worth the effort. I came to this country because I want to be part of it. And one guy said, you know, when I came here, I was a liberal Democrat. And, and, and then when I got to see how things really work in this country... I, I switched. He was a huge Trump supporter. And people were screaming at him, calling him a racist and a race traitor and everything else. So I interviewed him at the rally. And then I interviewed him out in the street after he was leaving. He was walking away. I said, hey, man, how's it going? He's like, I don't know what's going on. These people hate me now. They call me a race <laughs> traitor. They don't like me. They're, they're mad. They were pushing me. And, you know, he was just trying to leave, yeah, leave the yeah. event. Well, and that's one aspect of it. Shutting down people's free speech and the intolerance is part of that. But then here's the other thing, and this is the intolerance and the despising of the popular vote that I saw from George Will, for example. He writes an right. op-ed piece for the Washington Post. He says, if Trump is nominated, the GOP must keep him out of the White House. In other words, make sure that Hillary gets in there for the good of the GOP. Look, we have to understand they've got an agenda here, folks. The reason they don't want Trump in there, the reason people like George Will would like to see Hillary in is because of the globalist treaties. It's a division between globalism and nationalism. It's not and about the left anything. Doesn't else. want to talk about That's that. right. We'll be right back. Josh Owens and Rob Dew. I'm David Knight. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight with Rob Dew and Josh Owens. They've been here showing some new videos that have just gone up on Infowars.com as well as one that's gone viral, I think, on Facebook. It's got about two million views already just on Facebook, I think. We're going to be showing some other videos. Also, we'll be taking some of your calls and questions for them as to what they saw with the Dreamer riots. Before we get back to the suppression of free speech and the intolerance, I wanted to read a quote from George Will. This, of course, was in the Washington Post. It mentioned this in the last segment. His total despising of the popular vote. This is an elitist party apparatchik talking here. Listen to what he has to say. Indiana, Indiana and California can, by supporting Cruz, make the Republican convention a deliberative body rather than one that merely ratifies decisions made elsewhere. Where would those decisions have been made, guys? That's, he's talking about the elections, okay? So he thinks that the convention needs to make this decision, of course, rather than ratifying decisions that were made by voters across the country. And he goes, a convention's sovereign duty is to choose a plausible nominee who has a reasonable chance to win, not to passively affirm the will of a mere plurality of voters that was recorded episodically in a protracted process. Well, okay, let's, let's understand. What he's saying is that their responsibility is to pick somebody and not go to the plurality of voters. Just ignore that, okay? That plurality of voters recording 
episo episodically and a protracted process. That's what we call a primary election. And that's the contempt these people have for this. He says, if Trump were to be nominated, conservatives would have two tasks. The first one would be make sure that he loses 50 states. These are the insiders. This is the insiders of the GOP. Listen to what Ted Cruz said along the same lines. He said the last contested convention we had was in 1976. Ronald Reagan had a million more votes than Gerald Ford, but Gerald Ford got the votes of the majority of the delegates. Now, what Ted Cruz doesn't say is, what happened to Gerald Ford? He lost miserably to Jimmy Carter. Okay, why? Because they threw out the mere plurality of voters. Okay, the they have the people. Yeah, they have contempt for the voters. That didn't work out too well for the GOP establishment, did it? And then he goes on to say, you know, I'll use a football analogy. This is Ted Cruz again. He says, if you're on the 30-yard line and it's not a touchdown, Donald right now is on the 30-yard line. He wants everybody to say, hey, the game is over. I'm past the 50. So what? He can't earn a majority. Well, here's the real analogy, okay? The real analogy is, is that time has expired, okay? And, you know, let's say right now at this point, Trump is ahead 900 to 500, okay? So let's take it down to a football number. Let's say 36 to 20, okay? So at the end of regular play, Team A is ahead by 36 to 20. Team B demands that we have sudden death overtime and that they get new rules, new players, and they own the refs, okay? That's the real <laughs> reality here that Ted Cruz is talking about. It's a rigged process. They want to overthrow the ballot box just like these rioters that you guys were uh, recording want to overthrow the soapbox. I got an analogy for you. Ted Cruz is an anchor, and uh, he's just pulling people down. <laughs> uh, here it is from the Daily Caller. Glenn Beck, my campaigning with Cruz didn't cause layoffs at The Blaze. Yeah. The Blaze has apparently laid off 40 employees and lost $500,000 campaigning with Ted Cruz. That's Glenn Beck's outfit. Yeah. So he is, you know, now that Glenn Beck has jumped the shark literally over yeah. to the Ted Cruz camp, he's literally just going up in flames. <laughs> he's and an anchor around Glenn Beck's legs, and yeah. then Carly Fiorina is an anchor around Ted Cruz's legs. <laughs> so they're just adding anchor after anchor on this. So, yeah, poor Beck, he is, he's really eating, <laughs> eating his words at this point. Yes, I've lost yeah. money. I've lost half a million dollars. That's my choice. I believe in something. I'm not sure what he's believing in. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know what Ted Cruz believes in. You can't tell what You don't guy. know what he you believes in. You don't know. In. Absolutely. He's got a piece of software that's basically the hitchhiker's guide to uh, uh, winning elections, okay? <laughs> he pulls up this device as, as people are going door to door, and it tells them exactly what to say to you. It's kind of like a debabilizer, okay? This person speaks this language, so talk to them this way. Tell them precisely what they want to hear. He doesn't stand for anything. He's been on both sides of every issue. He's really the John Kerry of the GOP. But what you can see in this, the consistency, is that he will say or do anything. And now what he's saying is that Donald Trump will do everything he can to encourage riots. Did you see Donald Trump out there uh, smashing cars? Did you see Donald Trump supporters out there smashing cars? Nope. Burning flags. Did they grab Mexican flags from the protesters and burn them in their face? At every event that I've been to, and I've been to probably 15 now, I've never seen a Donald Trump person go out and try to find and pick a fight. Yeah. They're standing in line trying to get in. They want to get in and see what Donald has to say. Even the people who are skeptical are like, I'm not sure if I like this guy or not, but I want to see what he has to say. I want to see what the crowd's like. Mm -hmm. Because apparently they think it's some, the, the people on the outside, uh, you know, the people who hate Trump think it's some sort of Klan rally that's going on in there. When it's just a guy speaking, you can see all of his speeches on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no Klan rally going on. There's no, no cross burning. No. It's just talking about how do we t take our country, which has been dragged down by the globalists, and how do we change that? And, and so, uh, unfortunately, Unfortunately, these young kids, these impressionable youths have been duped by, you know, Facebook, who's pushing an anti-Trump movement, who's pushing open borders, yet the owner of Facebook lives around a wall. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. How, how ironic is that? You know, you've got this this crowd of people who just, you know, are literally, they're brainwashed, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Well, at the end of that video, when you talk to that Mexican guy and you say, how is Trump racist? And he can't explain it. So then he reverts to, well, a friend of a friend of a friend told me that... Trump would make his employees leave the room because he hated them because they were black and yeah. Mexican. It's like no a, proof. Fr a friend of a friend. So they have this yeah. bubble think, bubble speak, bubble speak, where they're in their little groups. They don't know what's going on in the world. I mean, there are cars spinning around them. They're jumping out in front of it. They're, they're jumping around in the streets like <laughs> that ought to tell you right yeah. there. Yeah, they're delusional. And it's obvious, especially when you're there and you look in their eyes and you see them spitting on someone's car, destroying the destroying someone's car yeah. just for wearing a Trump shirt. Yeah. And they're saying. He says we're bad people as they smash police cars. <laughs> as they, right. And exactly. as they bloody people's faces. And he's in there in the rally with 
people of all different races and cultures who are holding up pictures of loved ones who've been killed mm -hmm. by illegal aliens who've come in here unvetted and they're criminals and we're not allowed to vet them. That would be bad for us to do that. But, you know, that's... Uh, and now we've got some B-roll. There's yeah, the, that's the car. Yeah, that's the car getting yeah. destroyed. And yeah. then you, you had the, the guy who was just trying to get out of the parking lot. Uh, they block him up. He gets out of his car saying, hey, can you guys move? Someone grabs his hat. And then he lunges for his hat because those hats are pretty expensive. You know, the, th the $30 Make America, the yeah. MAGA hat. And they use that as an excuse to pounce on this guy and literally beat the tar out of him. Mm. I mean, and I can tell you standing there. I heard that guy, the meat in his face split open is how hard they hit him in the face. Wow. And his face was covered in blood wow. just for wearing a Trump hat and standing there and I, trying to leave. I am they're they're so away. tolerant. They're um, so, so nice. And, and it, it's so great to see that uh, coming here. And we can't vet that. We can't punish them because that would be racist. Right, okay? right. And, and no matter what they do, if you deport them, if you send them to jail, then that's racism. And I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. You know, I think when we look at these events here... If people look at this and look at what was going on, on the inside and they look at what these people are doing, to me, that is the end of the election right there. How do you justify that right there? How yeah. in any sh way, shape or form can you go, oh, that's cool because he was with Trump? Like the mindset there, mm -hmm. just the mm -hmm. total idiotic it's a game mindset. Yeah. It's a, the mindset you know, it's a, it's of a, a mob mentality. Yeah, it mob is. Mentality. It is mobs. It and is. I call those people thugs in that because yeah. people, well, why are you calling them thugs? Thugs would go out and do that to somebody. Yeah. The only person that thinks that is okay is a thug. Yeah. That's and it. it's that kind of tribalism thinking, okay, that feeds the cartels yeah. as much as the war on drugs. Um, I, I want to, uh, do we have time to play another video? Let's, uh, let's go to another video. But, but I also want to give out this number because uh, I know a lot of people want to ask you guys some questions. On Sunday, we've got a different number. It's 877-789-2539. That's 877-789-2539 if you want to call in with questions or with comments. Maybe I'd love to hear California. from people who were there. If, yeah. if you were there at that event, um, you know, at either event, either the San Francisco event or the one in... Um, in Orange County, which was Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. If you're at either one of those events, definitely call in and give us your perspective on what you saw. Were you uh, one of the rioters, uh, you know, showing love? Or were you one of the people standing in line just waiting to go in and see Trump or, and one of the disappointed people that didn't get in? Let me tell you. Or maybe you got in, you know, and, and again, that number is 877-789-ALEX. Right. Uh, towards the end, when, when they closed off the gates and there was only one gate open, it was like a Black Friday, people trying to get in. So many people wanted to see Trump. Wow. It's amazing. Wow. These people were really, really supporting him. But nobody was violent then either. They yeah. were just like, hey, we want to get in. That's but it. Ted Cruz says those people were the problem, yeah. not the rioters, not the uh, open border immigrants. Go to the Stay Cricket Ted Cruz right rally. rally. See what Again, that number is 877-789-ALEX if you want to call in. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here with Rob Dew and Josh Owens, who are just out at the Dreamer Riots in California. Riots that occurred around the Trump rally. We're also going to go to your calls here. Uh, Terry, David, Chris, others, hang on. We're going to go to you in just a moment. We've got one more video that we want to show and talk about. Before we do that, I also want to let you know about the end of the mega sale on InfoWars Select Storable Food. That's 30 to 40% off at InfoWarsStore.com. And this is a huge discount, folks. Huge, huge. Okay. Huge. <laughs> this is, and of course, 30 to 40 percent off. This is going to end on Friday. Alex extended it through tonight, but this will definitely be the end of it. He did that as a thank you to people and to help you prepare. You know, we're looking at these riots. We're looking at how our society is on the verge of breaking down. And as uh, Rob Dew was just talking about uh, one of these riots, uh, somebody who's living in San Francisco in a city on an earthquake zone comes over and says, what are you, one of these preppers? And it's like, yeah, yeah, we need to take some preparation for our family, for ourselves. And uh, this is one way that you can take advantage of this mega sale. 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Food at InfoWarsStore.com. Also, Super Male Vitality is about to sell out. It's a good time to secure your supply right now. And if you sign up for auto ship, you will never be sold out on the supplements that you buy, on the products that you buy on a regular basis. You pick how much you want to get on the interval that you want to get it, and you get a 10% discount. That's our way of saying thank you. And again, we want to make this a win-win situation. So you help us by letting us know how to manage our inventory better, and we try to extend that savings to you with a 10% discount. Again, uh, Super Male Vitality is about to sell out, and tonight ends the sale of 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Food at InfoWarsStore.com. Tell us about this uh, next video, Rob. Well, first of all, 
as I walk around with an InfoWars mic, I get a lot of people, hey, InfoWars, hey, InfoWars, great, I love it. It's glad InfoWars is here. Then you get some people that, you know, hate free speech and hate freedom and hate liberty and, and want to have a totalitarian fascist state, a, uh, a dictatorship. Get out of here. I need yeah. some muscle to remove these reports. Exactly. Yeah, that lady. Any of that stuff. <laughs> and, and so I look at these guys and they're like, why? How could you support Trump? How could you support him? You know, in the beginning, I wasn't for Trump. You weren't for Trump. No. But when you see both sides of the snake, of the eagle of death, which is the, the Democrats and the Republicans attacking this guy, mm -hmm. it makes you think, why are they so mad at this guy? What has he done? Do they really care about Americans and America? No, we know that's true. Yeah. We know the Democrats don't give a flying F about what's going on on in our country, neither do the Republicans, those diehard groups. They could care less. They are for themselves. They are for special interests. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what pisses me off so much that these people, you know, oh, how, how could you how could you be for Trump? How, how dare you? Because I have long Look, hair. Know, I must suddenly just bow down to whatever. Yeah. Yeah, we know he's not a libertarian. When it comes to libertarian or when it comes to individual liberty, it's a Hobson's choice. We don't have a choice, okay? But, they got one thing that they put out there. And when we're looking at Donald Trump, however, there is a choice between globalism and nationalism. And if we don't make that choice now, and that's something that the president can legitimately do. All of these, so many of these issues that they get people so fired up about yep. aren't things that the president can do anything or should do anything according to the Constitution, okay? But this is something in terms of the globalism versus nationalism, if we can keep the nation, if we can keep... Uh, from from turning over our government to uh, offshore committees who are going to manage our economy to uh, the people who are going to set up carbon taxes to shut us down. If we can maintain our borders, maintain our country, maintain our constitution, at least in theory, then we can restore it in practice. We have an opportunity to do that, and we can do that at places other than the president. But when it comes to the sure. president, there's nobody out there that's talking about the Bill of Rights. Exactly. Yeah. Or the 28 pages. Yeah, that's you right. Know, but nobody Trump wants is. to talk about Trump that. Is. And they yeah. really do hate him, and they really made it clear. I mean, we look at people unmasking like George Will and saying, well, we got to make sure if he gets a nomination that he loses in all 50 states. Yeah. Okay. Th this because is a gotta... coordinated attack on yeah. all sides and people need to figure out like, why are they doing this and not necessarily go, hey, I'm behind Trump. One thing Trump said, he's only going to run, he's only going to be president for four years if he wins. And mm. he said, I'm just going to do it for four years and I'm out. Okay. That should tell you something. That should tell you this guy is not thirsting for power. He's going to get in do what he's going to do, and then move on and let somebody else take over. But maybe that's enough time. Maybe that four years is enough time for our, our country to wake up and really see what's going on in the world and yeah. not just blindly follow these demagogues out there, these media talking heads that tell you, you know, the sky is green when it's really blue. Well, it's very important for people to understand how this whole system has been rigged. Yeah. They need to understand that we've had a single party at the top when it comes to issues of uh, globalism, of things like NAFTA and these uh, new treaties that they're presenting us with, the Trans-Pacific, right. Transatlantic Partnership. That's what they need to understand. Let's go to that yep. report right now, and let's play that, and we'll talk about that when we come back, and we'll take your calls. Seeing all this opposition coming from Bernie and Hillary supporters and sitting there talking about we're, liber we're liberal, we're loving, we, we just want peace, yet they throw eggs at you and, and punch you in the mouth because they're peaceful and loving. I saw what went down in, uh, in Southern California. Right. I, I, it got to me. I had to come out here and actually talk about what's going on. These people don't want to talk to you. That's the problem. They're, they sit there and say they don't have double standards yeah. and that they're not hypocritical. They'll come up to you and just yell and scream. Nazis, racist, can't get gas! Nazi All right, they just said they were going to be arrested. Got people being triggered. Yeah, no other countries do this. There's no there's no Muslim countries killing gays right now. It's just the United States that's bad. That's right. Disillusioned youth. Burning the flag right now. They're burning the American flag at this point. Here's a useful dupe. Yeah, they're not practicing hate at all right now. That's right. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We can't let a guy, we're right, so afraid of one man that we can't let him speak. And we're going to try to crack. Now, if we, if people That's were burning, that they're burning, they're burning an, an effigy. effigy. Yeah. If you did that with any other person, you would be a heretic. 
Yeah. You would have to be, you know, crucified like wearing this. stickers that said decapitate Trump. Yeah, decapitate yeah. Trump. With anybody else, that'd be a hate crime. But, but that is cool. It's okay. It's okay if you're brown and want to burn something in effigy. That's when it's okay. There they are pushing us off a sky bridge right now, the cops. And that was just press up there. They didn't even want press up there. This was an anti-Trump guy who really wanted to get into a fight. Yeah. Yeah. This was a lady who got arrested. I want She's wearing the green bandana. Both of those the little people, anarchist green both bandana. Both of those people were Hispanic, by the way. Yeah. He was telling her she was a disgrace because she is. Yeah. She later said she'd rather be young and dumb than old. Well, here they are. They come to this country. They burn the American flag. They fly the Mexican flag and they get in people's faces. And of course, Ted Cruz says, Donald Trump is. But that's funny. loving. That's the new love now. Okay. Yeah. That's what we've been conditioned to accept that love is getting in people's faces at, at political rallies and pushing them, spitting on them, and cussing at them and punching them out. That's love. That's amazing. Let's go to uh, Terry in Virginia. Terry, we've got a, just a little bit of time. And if we don't have time, we'll, we'll hold you over through the uh, break. Go ahead, Terry. Hi. I just wanted to uh, report two things. I was a delegate at the uh, Virginia State Republican Convention over the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that was. Uh, but a troubling thing is that we came away from voting on a slate that had 10 um, crews, delegates. And okay, hang on. We're going to go to a break. We're out of time. You can tell us what the results were when we come back. Stay with us. David Knight, Rob Dew, and Josh Owens, and our caller there, Terry in Virginia. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight with Rob Dew and Josh Owens. We've been talking about what happened in California with the Dreamer riots, and now we're going to take your calls. We were just talking to Terry in Virginia. She was a delegate uh, to the Virginia GOP convention. Terry ran out of time just as you were telling us uh, what happened there. Recap uh, how many people were there and, and uh, what the decision was uh, that was made. Go ahead. Well, there were supposed to be over 5,000 delegates um, that uh, were supposed to attend, but we ended up with less than 3,000 that showed up, we were given a list of 78 uh, delegates to go to the National Convention. Uh, 27 of those delegates had committed to Cruz, 16 committed to Trump. Uh, we had 32 that were undeclared and three for Kasich. And at the end of the, the day when we were ready to vote, they handed us what they call slate. And this is I'm not exactly sure how they choose these 13 delegates to go to the National Convention out of the 78 that we were given, but we ended up with 10 crews delegates going to the National Convention and three Trump in a state where Donald Trump won 35% of the popular vote and Ted Cruz won 17%. Now, I, I was a voter in favor of Ted Cruz, so I'm not like he wanted to say on Hannity that I'm not a Trump whiner that's complaining about this delegate process. But it was obvious to me at the end of the day that this was this was rigged. It was stacked. It was, yes. you know. Well, it's what I, um, I mentioned earlier when we see this uh, editorial from George Will saying that uh, we, we shouldn't allow uh, voters who have been recorded episodically in a protracted process determine who the nominee is going to be. In other words, he's just flat out rejecting the whole idea of having primary elections. And then we have Ted Cruz say this. He says, it's going to be a battle to see who can earn a majority of the delegates elected by the people at the convention. And it's like, wait a minute, which, which one is it? Is it going to be the delegates that were elected by the people? Or is it going to be the delegates that the GOP and Ted Cruz selected to go to the convention. That's the thing that I'm concerned about. Wouldn't you think, and you say you're a Cruz supporter, wouldn't you think that the people that are quote unquote Cruz delegates, that they would be supporting Cruz and people who are Trump delegates would be people who are loyal to Trump to go to the convention? Wouldn't you think that would be the way that it would be arranged, uh, Terry? Well, that's the way it should be. Yeah. And there were plenty of us there yesterday. I tell you, there were a lot of arguing. There was a lot of arguing going on. For, it was my first experience as a delegate. And I was told that there was a lot more arguing and, you know, about this delegate thing going on there than had ever happened. So people are really fed up. But well, you know, no it's not just you. 
It was the former, and I think she is two-term governor, Jan Brewer of Arizona, went to the Arizona convention, GOP convention yesterday, where they actually chose the individual delegates after they'd had the election, after Donald Trump had gotten over, uh, he'd gotten 40-some-odd percent of the vote. He had all 58 delegates, according to the election. But then Ted Cruz got every single one of them. And Jan Brewer, the former governor, I think two-time governor, said, I've been a delegate to the last five GOP conventions, and I was excluded because I was loyal to Trump. I mean, that's amazing to me. I just see them taking over the entire electoral process and doing it in such a blatant fashion. I mean, it's not even a split. It was unanimous for Trump, and then they switch it around at the convention to where it's unanimous for Cruz. Isn't that amazing? Well, and the, if you look at the percentages, I mean, it's just crazy. If Trump had 35% of the popular vote and Cruz only had 17, well, if you give, you're giving Ted Cruz 10 delegates to go, and that's 77% yeah. of the delegates, and Trump has three, which is only 23%. And there was a lot and more people in the race during when Virginia was happening. It wasn't just right. three like it is now. That's right. I think know? that was back at Super Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Terry. I want to get, we got a lot of callers that are backed up here. Let's go to uh, Chris in Indiana. Chris. Hello, Hello Chris. Everyone. Hey, go ahead. Hi, I'm from South Bend, Indiana, and I'm going to a Trump rally tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, look, all this racism stuff, I am proud to be white. And this is turning into anti-racist is code term for anti-white. And like race, like this whole war on language, racist really means it's not like you're against another race. Racist, the definition basically is you're proud to be your race. And it's like only white people cannot be proud of their race. That's because the system hates white people because we love guns. We, we know we we're pissed off. I mean, Oh, we love the family. Well, I think it's amazing that La Raza, I think it's amazing that La Raza, which is Spanish for the race, yeah. uh, can, can do this, and yet nobody calls them racist. They can I say mean, it is La Raza. blatantly racist. Exactly. That's what you heard at the, uh, at oh, the yeah. events. Uh, to, heard it too coming. many times to, uh, to count. Yeah, absolutely. So are you going to the uh, Trump rally tomorrow? Is there one uh, there in Indiana? Yeah, I work downtown. I'm a medical technologist downtown here in uh, South Bend, and I'm just going to walk there because I, I mean, I'm not going to bring my car anywhere around there after seeing like police cars getting shaken up and stomped on and all this. Uh, I'll just take the six block walk. Yeah, there's know? no concern for private right. property. I would have a camera ready and a backup camera in case that one goes down and be sure all your batteries are charged because you never know when stuff is going to break out. It seems to break out after people get turned away and they're going back to their cars. That's when stuff starts to happen, when, when the, the rally fills up and there's, you know, 1,500, 1,000 people just standing around going, well, I guess we're going to leave. And, uh, and then they have to go back through the protesters. So that's an important point, Chris. Yeah. Make sure you got a camera. Make sure you record it because the mainstream media is going to twist this. And so is Ted Cruz to say that it's the Trump supporters' fault and that it's uh, Donald Trump's fault on this. So and make then, sure you record it. And, and Chris, get your video out and then send us an email. So you can send me an email, robd at Infowars.com or um, uh, whistleblower at Infowars.com. Absolutely. You know, put it out there. Thank you, Chris. Let's go to Frank in North Carolina. Frank, go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot, David. Uh, I uh, wanted to make a quick comment on Ted, Ted Cruz. I, I hear a lot of people saying that, well, you know, it just it show the reason that he's not getting traction is it just shows that America is not as conservative as it used to be. Well, that may be partly true, but I think the real reason that Ted Cruz is not getting traction is because uh, they don't people don't believe Ted Cruz. They see through him. That's right. They uh, they don't they don't believe that he is a conservative. They don't believe that he is a Christian. I mean, you look at his, his behavior, his actions, uh, cheating on his wife and, and all of this infidelity and everything. So obviously he, he didn't honor his oath to his wife. He, 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 he's, I think, I mean, I, I was telling Alex uh, years ago, year and a half or two ago, that this guy is not what you think. And the fact that his wife is CFR and was drawing up the North American Union and the fact that she worked for the num one of the number one enemy banks of the people of humanity, uh, that, that does mean something. This guy came out of the bushes. This guy comes out of the bushes. He he is he honors the bushes. He he loves his uh, his association with the Bush family, the Bush crime family. And I don't I don't know if people remember this or not, but I think it was back in around 1987 or 88. George Herbert Walker Bush had stated 
you know, as far as Christians go, they have an extra uh, chromosome. They're 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 mentally retarded. <laughs> I mean, these people they play the Christian, yeah. they play the yes. Christian yes. Uh, as suckers. And, and you're that's what Ted Cruz is doing. And and he hasn't carried the evangelicals in the South, which is what he said he was going to do. Because I think a lot of people have seen through it. You see through it. I see through it. And I saw through what he was doing at the open carry rally that we covered in San Antonio. We got a thousand people out there uh, marching for their uh, legal rights respected here in Texas to open carry uh, uh, firearms that long arms that were slung over their shoulders at the time. Ted Cruz was in the hotel behind it across the street doing a fundraiser with Republican women, you know, having this little literal tea party with them because that's what he does. You go to Indianapolis and you got uh, Donald Trump going to the people who are seeing their factory, their carrier factory move down to uh, Mexico. Ted Cruz goes to a GOP dinner. I mean, this is what we see over and over. You're supposed to <laughs> vote on audit the of... Fed? Go campaign somewhere. That's you right. Know? Yeah, that's exactly. Versus MO. So I don't, I don't buy any of that stuff. I haven't bought it for a long time, and I don't. Uh, his his wife's connections with Goldman Sachs, with uh, the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, you know, it's just absolutely amazing if you really vet this guy. And you don't have to look at uh, any issues that are put out by the National Choir. Look at what he did to Ben Carson. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more of your calls. Well, I started off the broadcast today, and I'm going to be ending it here. We've got a roundtable discussion going there in the studio. We've got David Knight. We've got Josh Owen, so I do want to hear more from him. He's just such an amazing camera guy and journalist, and, of course, Rob Dew. But I want to just spend a few minutes here pointing out that this shows us really how high the stakes are under globalism, the balkanization, the open borders, uh, what the establishment is doing to make sure that we're sowed each other's throats, we can fall to their, to their foreign takeover. We have an occupied country. We are being subdivided. We are being tested as a model for new world order control worldwide. And for folks that haven't gone to Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.com or haven't gone to DrudgeReport.com where they have some of our videos linked, you haven't watched this for yourself to just see, you know, just big, fat people hopping around waving Mexican flags and then, like, weirdo social justice warrior people that look like they're you know, glow-in-the-dark space aliens with a bunch of hateful Black Lives Matter people just attacking anyone they can and just saying, we're peaceful, we're peaceful, bam, punch you right in the face. It's like a sick cult. And they just think they've been given the green light by the establishment, and they have been given the green light, but they think to, quote, take over. No, no, it's to create the clash of civilizations, and when it's all said and done, we'll have nothing but a total police state in this country. But I just want to say, you know, Rob Dew and, and, and uh, people like Josh Owens who, and, and of course David Knight and countless others that have gone into these conflict zones like the Bundy standoff, both in Nevada and up in uh, Oregon and all the stuff in Ferguson with the guys getting shot with rubber bullets, you know, Joe Biggs, Jakari getting hit with tear gas. I really just want to say that I am so proud of the team we've got and the modern 21st century Paul Revere's that we've got in our crew. But I also want to thank all of you the listeners and the viewers, because I'm not being patronizing when I say you are the resistance. I mean, we couldn't do this without you. And I, I, mean, I know you know that, but understand our victories against tyranny, exposing this evil, are your victories. And so I want everybody to savor the fact that we've got mega viral videos every week exposing the globalist takeover that they don't want people to see. You know, even the LA Times bemoaned all the Mexican flags and said, oh my gosh, this is really going to help Trump. Absolutely. We're going to get out there. We're going to show the face of the new world order. And, and, and what it has created and these dumbed-down masses of desperate people of every race, color, and creed who think fighting with each other while we're all collectively being enslaved is going to create some great future for us. So I just wanted to – I'm going to get off here and just listen. Um, I'm listening here on the free iPhone app. Uh, but I want to hear Josh spend a few minutes about his experiences, what he saw, and then you guys can take a few final calls. But just in closing, please, folks, support InfoWarsStore.com. Everybody needs storable food in these bad times. 30 to 40% off Infowar Select and InfowarStore.com. Bunch of specials on nutraceuticals running right now as well. And you're getting great products, and you're funding independent, free media. It is very expensive to do this. You know, look at Glenn Beck says he's on the verge of bankruptcy, all the rest of it. We've tried to do it, you know, lean, mean, you know, on the ground right here in Texas as inexpensively as we can. But if we had the funds, we could do even more. So I want to thank you all for your support and now pass the baton to Josh Owens, who was there uh, for the uh, Communist Ford Foundation, New World Order Finance, uh, La Reconquista garbage, uh, the attacks on free speech. And, and these videos, folks, 
are the weapons of truth. They don't want your speech out there. They don't want our videos out there. They don't want this information seen. That's why you've got to get it and send it out, knowing you're literally in a military operation against the globalist. All right, Infowars.com forward slash show. Spread that link, folks, and thank you for your support. Absolutely, and just like Alex said, whether it's Bundy Ranch, whether it's Ferguson, all these places that we've been going to, no one else is really doing this to the scale that we're doing it. Uh, me and Rob Dew were out there with iPhones posting videos immediately as things were happening so that people can see that the media can't spin these Trump outside of these Trump rallies any longer because we're pretty much going to all of them. Yeah. And when you see, see, the crazy thing about being there is that you actually get up close and personal and get to look in these people's eyes. And you see the difference, like Alex said, you see the difference from the people that are standing in line that are going into the Trump rally and the people that are protesting it. And it's not about wealthy people and poor people. It's just about people that look like decent, honest, regular people. And then people that they look like criminals and their actions are proving that they are criminals. Oh, yeah. So when people get upset about Trump saying they're bringing in criminals, they're bringing, you know, if you're, if you're upset about that, then don't prove him right. Yeah. Don't go out there and destroy your city. See, that's what does, doesn't make any sense to me. In Costa Mesa, Donald Trump comes to their town and they're all like, well, this is our town. You know, you're not going to come to our town. Well, then why are you destroying your own town when he comes to it? How does that make any sense that you're going to tag the light poles and you're going to spray paint the sign of the facility that he was at? You're going to torment the people that live in your town. What is that doing to Donald Trump other than making you look like a criminal and look like a moron is actually what it's doing. And it's very important, like you pointed out, the fact that People support us, that we can go to these different places. You mentioned the Bundy Ranch, and Alex mentioned the fact that Glenn Beck's uh, operation is, is facing financial difficulty. Well, he was lying about what was going on at the Bundy Ranch, just like Ted Cruz is lying about what's going on in Chicago, what happened in California. People see through the lies when he says Trump is causing these riots. Trump is encouraging riots. He's going to do everything he can to encourage riots. It's like, that's not what's happening. And you guys were there. You took the videos. You, people can see for themselves now what's going on unedited not the way that the uh, mainstream press puts this out there with their toned down headlines like well we don't really know what happened there was a trump rally and then all this violence because of trump right okay. it was all incited by the controlled opposition and you can see the videos we've been putting them out just watch it for yourself but, and we got more we're putting out too we have plenty of videos we've we, you know there's just not enough uh time in the day to upload these things with, with some of the upload speeds but we do appreciate everybody's support out there for uh, you know allowing us to do this because when I first got here, it wasn't like the news wasn't as uh, instant as, as what we have now. I mean, it is instant news and we have to be on that front edge or else we will get left behind. And, and people will the, the mainstream media will be able to push their narrative. You know, the one thing about the mainstream media, they got big vans and big cameras, but they can't move as fast as a couple guys with iPhones. That's right. So That's right. We have that going for us. And they're losing credibility. Yeah. Just as Beck did, because they people can see that they're they're spinning this. They're not telling the truth about what's going on. Let's go to Scott in Washington. Scott, go ahead. Hello, Scott. You're still there. Um, well, there's two things I want to mention real quick. It's not surprising that good old Ted Cruz with a feel such compassion for these dreamers because if you recall with this good old friend Glenn C. Beck, guess who was down there on the border passing out teddy, bear, teddy bears and soccer ball? That's right. That was a narrative that they were selling everybody and yet what we saw in reality is we saw these people wearing the Mexican flag, burning the American flag, smashing police cars, spray painting people's cars because they had somebody with a Trump shirt on the inside and then on the inside of the rally you got Donald Trump standing there with people, uh, Hispanic, black, uh, other, and, and, and they're showing their pictures of their relatives who were murdered by criminals who came across the border illegally unvetted. And that's what has to be stopped. Absolutely. That's love and compassion from Ted C. Yeah, absolutely. But I have to mention the number one reason that I would want to see Donald Trump get it I even above uh, bringing back jobs to this country, and Roger Stone alluded to it, is that he would be the one that would have standing to go after and to prosecute the Clinton Foundation and all the garbage that's going on in there. And I would solely believe that all the blackmail that uh, she's got on people uh, in Washington has to do with that foundation and has to probably do with the fact that people were probably heavily invested in it. And I think you'll see a whole lot of stuff come out. So I sincerely hope that he uh, 
puts muscle into doing that. That's well, there's a lot that I think he'll expose. I mean, even when we look at what people are talking about with the uh, upcoming debates between him and Hillary Clinton, he's going to go after Hillary Clinton's criminal past, and no other Republican would do that. They're all going to say, oh, that wouldn't fi fit into decorum. We just can't uh, come after her. You need to come after people if they're committing criminal actions. Thank you, Scott. Let's go real quickly to Rich in New York City. Go ahead, Rich. Good evening, Dave. Thanks for uh, taking my call. Listen, a couple comments. One is, you know, I'm kind of disgusted by this whole, all these protests that are going on at the Trump rally. And, and you know, what's really troublesome is that, Guys, if you're not behind Trump, you have a simple solution. Don't vote for him. And the fact that they're restricting everybody's free speech, free speech is disgusting. That's number one. Yeah, go you rally behind another it. candidate. You know, go go uh, walk the streets for that candidate. Go make some phone calls. Go do something positive with your time instead of destroying property and getting in people's faces, yeah. calling them racist. For do a video. Rally. Tell people why yeah, exactly. you support the candidate you support or why you don't support this other guy. But instead, they just stand out there and chant three words and get violent with it's people. It's become a fad. Yeah. That's all it is. Absolutely. Go ahead and continue, Rich. The point is about uh, Ted Cruz, and I share a couple commonalities with Cruz. Number one, I was born on the same day he was. Number two is I'm half Canadian. And you know what? <laughs> I can't run for president, and neither can Ted Cruz. He's not eligible. He should have been out of this a long time. He hasn't produced any documentation, and he needs to just bow out. I think that's why he's and there, so he can bow out. Going on. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're going to use him to bow out and install somebody else, because I don't think they really want Ted Cruz either. He's just a pawn at this point. Well, that's all the time we've got. Sorry to the callers that we couldn't get to. Join us tomorrow morning at 11 Central and noon Eastern.